How's it going, everyone? Uh, this is Tag here. Um, I know it's been a while since I've really done anything like this before. And the main reason for that is because I thought I had my mic, my mic, uh, my condenser mic. Um, it was it was broken for the longest time, like not working at least. And then I saw that it was working. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's alive. I can I can record finally. And um, then it dies like five minutes later after after I plug it in and see that it's working. So I don't know what happens there. I don't know if it's actually broken or unfixable or not. But um, I think later on I'm just going to get a, a new mic uh, once I save en up enough money to get so. Um, so in the meantime, I think this mic quality is, is decent on my headset, but I'm not too sure. Um, I, I just got OBS, which is pretty cool. Um, I noticed that I was using Camtasia Recorder for any like uh, any like tutorial stuff. I always use Camtasia because it's just fast, quick, and easy. But I noticed that um, I I tested my my audio in Audacity, and um, it looks like if if you use certain programs, I guess certain um, recording software that it limits your microphone i don't know because but i i noticed that it did do that so if you ever use camtasia studio um i, I would recommend you try and test out your mic in in audacity first before um doing something but i'm using obs and it, it seems to work all right um so let's go get get right into this um and see what we're doing today so today I have a map, right? It's going to be a, uh, it's sort of simplistic in the fact that it's not like super huge. It doesn't like take up everything. It's not really like super big, but it has like a lot of detail like in, I don't know. It, it's simple and it's complex at the same time, I would say. And uh, it also has water and it has glowstone and stuff. All the things that make that that can turn this into a really nice scene and stuff. So this is gonna be a sort of long tutorial series about like lighting. I actually don't know how long it's gonna be, but um, I'm thinking each video will be about 20, 20 minutes or so. And uh, just every other day, I'll just like post the tutorial for you guys. So um, let's get kind of into this. I wanna show you guys some examples of some of the lighting I've done uh recently starting with like this is like a the fallen kingdom map remake or whatever and i did some testing of lighting and stuff and it looks really really nice this is without global illumination um i know i've been a big fan of global illumination for the longest time but i've started to see how to not be able how to not use it um since that was like a main thing with uh the capsize animation I was really desperate to use global illumination for everything, and it really slowed things down a lot. So, um, but I figured some things out that will be helpful for you guys to learn and how to light like this and stuff. Um, I also got this. This is a really old um, render, but it's still, it's it it's still really nice for some reason. I I think this is still to this day probably one of my favorite renders, just because of how just like clean it is and how nice and the lighting is just like perfect. And this is like just the first render I did on this scene is crazy. So I really like this one. Um, this was also a newer one with like the really, uh, the rain look to it and stuff. I was just testing some stuff out um, and it came out pretty nice. And then here's a recent one where uh, I tried to do like a jungle type scene scene or whatever and you can see there's like fog and there's little light um shadows casting through the leaves and stuff and it looks really nice and the doff and stuff you can't really see that much but um it looks really nice and uh and the map that i'm using um is pharaoh dwin town center and i'll have a link to that in the description so I want to go over some of the basic stuff, um, like the lighting, you see, like, lighting that people don't tell you about, um, and 
the Minecraft community and maybe other communities and stuff, there's there's a lot of different things that you can do with just regular Cinema 4D lights that I didn't realize until until maybe like a couple of days ago. I was like, whoa, that's how people are doing this stuff. And uh, so I want to share that with you guys because if I can catch a lot of people up on how to use lights the proper way instead of how people are using them like for Minecraft animations, you can look up a ton of tutorials on lighting and it's pr practically the same thing. I don't see anyone using like, like, um, there's certain, there's certain things that you'll see a lot of people just say, oh, you can stick a light in like this and that's how you kind of light your scene and you just keep on adding lights like that and turn on shadows and stuff like that. But there's actually, there's there's a lot more within lighting that people don't realize, uh, especially in the Minecraft animation community. And uh, I kind of want to go over some of those points uh, right now. And then later on, we're going to actually like decorate this scene and stuff like that. So I'm going to turn this into a null. So that's a null group. So basically, I just press Alt-G on my keyboard or it would be uh, Command-G on the Mac. Um, and we're just going to call this map. I usually just like to have one thing because we're going to have a bunch of lights in here and it's going to be good. The first thing I usually always do, um, usually I always mess with the materials first, but I'm going to take the approach of just doing lights and uh, break a few things down for you guys. So, <laughs> I know many of you guys are against physical sky. And although I added a physical sky in my scene, I'm not going to use a physical sky, okay? There's one main purpose why physical sky is super, super important, right? So you, what you want to do is turn off sun, turn off sky, okay? We're not going to use them, so don't freak out. Um, what we are going to use it for is for atmosphere. Now, you guys might be asking yourselves, okay, so what's the difference between environment and um, physical sky atmosphere? Because they kind of do the same thing. Like, if you enable fog on um, on atmosphere or your environment, sorry, and let's say we put this to, like, 5,000. So basically it kind of creates a fog, foggy look. And this is, there's nothing wrong with this, right? If you render it, you kind of get something like this, just a standard base render. And it it looks really nice and stuff. The thing that I don't like about environment, though, is that it's not accurate. It adds just fog everywhere. Like, it will... The thing with, with environment is that it will make your scene, like... How do I say this? It'll take away from, like, the actual color and depth in your scene rather than add to it, Right? So what I mean by that is that if you turn this off, you have really dark and nice colors, right? You can see this even in the viewport, right? You have really nice dark standard colors. If you put environment on, it ta it washes a lot of that away, right? The difference with physical sky at atmosphere, um, if I set this up, should be set up right, but we'll see is that it doesn't really take away, it kind of adds to it, but if we want to make this a little bit more dramatic, so I'm gonna set some settings in here. I put 10, so horizon fade is basically, it fades on this, on this edge right here, but I usually just put 10%, even if you don't see anything, it, it kind of fades and smooths out the, the edge on this dashed line. Saturation correctness that basically, um, as things proceed to get further away or whatever, then it kind of makes the saturation. So what physical sky atmosphere does is basically the further you go away, it fades things and makes turns it like either more blue or more whitish, depending on what your settings are or whatever. But it just fades things out as things get further. What what environment does is it just fades everything up to a certain point. So you think you have more control over environment, but it really just, it gives a really unnatural feel to to it. But in a stylistic sense, if you're like doing underwater, then it's very practical because then you want to control everything that's underwater and the way that goes and stuff. 
So it's a little bit different in the way that they both work. So I'm going to amplify this to like 500 so you guys can kind of see what's going on. There we go. Okay. So you can see here that everything's like really blue. That's maybe a little bit too much, but um, hopefully we can see it here. Okay. So you can see how it kind of fogs everything out and it kind of gives this bluish tint at the, I don't know, at, in between things. And so we're going to gonna go like a little bit closer we're gonna put this to like 120 because we don't want something like super we want it to be like just very vague so that that works and it might not look like anything right now because we're not dealing with shadows or anything so we're gonna come back to this but i want you to understand that uh physical sky atmosphere is really really important um later on so we're gonna just disable that for right now because we're not gonna need that until the end um so how do we go about lighting this first, right? And uh, I, I always want to go and use my lighting preset. Now, that might be like sort of a plug, like, oh, get this lighting thing. But I spend a long time on, um, on my lighting preset, and I'm very happy because I use it uh, actually a lot. So if you do have my lighting plug in, um, it's, it's like... It, it's like five or ten dollars if it's not five dollars then i'll make it five dollars i'll make my uh my plugins five dollars or whatever so that way it's cheaper for a lot of people but um so this can be kind of a little overview of how this works so basically when you get my plugins or whatever basically you can go to the selection tool right and you can go to select polygon normal direction right you have that here and uh, what we're going to do is we want to light all the things that pretty much light in our scene. So that's going to be glowstone first. And we're going to select the top. We're going to select the tops of uh, just one glowstone. And we're going to go over here to this selection. Here, let me drag this out. Select polygon normal direction. And we're going to press apply. And what you're going to see is that selects all of the, um, all of the polygon faces the top faces for each and every uh, glowstone, which is really, really nice because instead of having to do this all yourself, now you have all the selections of all the uh, glowstone that you need in your scene. Now, for a scene that doesn't have, like, let's say your scene has glowstone on, like, walls and stuff, and it may not have a top face, easy way to, to uh, do that is maybe... You can select another face as well, and it'll select two faces on each uh, on each glowstone. You just gotta amp this up past like 90, or not past 90, past 40. I think it's past 40. No, not past 40. Anyways, you just you just keep on amping this up, and hopefully you'll get something that works. <laughs> I can't really show it in here because this is such a small scene, but. Um, Basically, what you want to do is you basically just do another side until you get different things. Another thing you can also do is you can also use just the whole glowstone. And even though it'll render a little bit longer, at least you know each glowstone will be lit. Um, and I'll show that later on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go up here to the set selection tag. So now that we have each top face on the glowstone selected, we're going to say set selection. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to set our selection here on the glowstone for each one of those faces. And then we come back here to light map. We can turn it on. And then we can put the object top faces here. And then we put glowstone. Oops, that's another rat. We put glowstone right here. And what you can see here is now that we're getting our lights. And you can turn on all these light layers and it starts lighting all these glowstone. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys, so we're gonna take it off of quick shading. What I meant, let's see if we can't see it. Oh, we can. So this is what I meant. Now, this isn't as accurate. Um, I'm probably gonna have to update this sometime soon so that way it, it's better for you guys. But um, like I was saying, it's not so accurate. Like, it'll do most of the glowstone, but 
there are still like some that aren't lit and all the layers are here so again right now um this is only like a, a measure for the selection measure is only for um for lag purposes so if you're lagging really bad or if your render times are super high um then what you can do is you can do the different light layers to limit certain things um or use the polygon selection um another thing you could do is you can just not use this and then it'll light everything but the thing is it, it might double a lot of things so like here you can see there's like two or three on this one uh thing so just watch out for that um that's the one drawback for this even though it does like light everything um i said like light not light light but uh <laughs> um yeah it just doubles up on a lot of things so just watch out for that but as long as you can kind of get a sense of um what's going on then that's all you need to do um uh, the the default color on this is like a really dark orange i learned that it's probably better to make this like a like in between like the really dark orange and like the white so just do that and so right now and make sure animation mode isn't on so right now this is what we get we get something that looks pretty nice so far um i'm gonna turn off visible light because we don't need it in this case i'll tell you why later so now you can see that we now have all our lighting on the glowstone and stuff like that. It's not exactly perfect. And the reason for that is because all of our glowstone is like above this. So what we need to do is we need to put the lights above our glowstone. So that way they're not inside of our glowstone for right now. The, uh, the way you can do that or how you can do that is just move this, put 100. So that way all the lights in the scene just go up one or up by 100 and then click this reset button. And you should see that they all move. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, should see from right here. So now you can kind of see that they're kind of coming from the top. And that's okay. Or you can make it go from the bottom. It doesn't really matter. So you do negative 100. Oops, forgot to switch that. So if you do negative 100, it should, yeah, it should light the bottom. So whichever one you want to do, um, lighting the bottom might be a little bit better. Um, the next thing you want to do for at least glowstone is duplicate this texture. Then go to luminance. And we're going to just drag the same texture into the luminance tab. And there we go. And then we're going to apply this to the glowstone. So we'll just do that. So now we can see that all of our glowstone are really bright. This is without luminance. So now it's just regular glowstone. It doesn't really have any lighting properties, I would say. And then you add luminance and everything's a little bit brighter for the glowstone. So now when you put on that light, it kind of looks like it's actually lighting things. <laughs>